was the transistor and the switch is what we have discussed. And today, what we are going to discuss is something called as the um, amplifier uh, circuit. For people who have done already the Monday's lab, lab five and six people, you must be having a little bit of idea about what we discussed on lab, uh, lab day itself. So the same thing we are going to do today. What I thought is that although this is there in the next module, but as we are going to discuss in our lab and as well as I think it will be easier for uh, all of you to uh, figure out that what exactly you are doing in your lab. So I thought I will be finishing it this portion of our uh, um, of fourth module here itself in the third module extension. So that's why today's discussion is primarily based on BJ, uh, BJT as an amplifier. All right. So please keep a note of this point because they are very, very important. These points, whatever I'm going to discuss, they are absolutely important. All right. So let me share my screen with you. All right. Uh, is my screen visible to all? Is my screen visible? Yes. Yes. Sir. Okay. 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 Uh, so this is basically, as I said. Uh, this is one of the important most application of B of BJT is the amplifier circuit. And as I already had stated that as we have three different operating region, one is the active region, saturation region and cutoff region in the most of the BJTs, if they are in, uh, they are used as an amplifier, they should be used in the active region of a circuit. What it happens is basically the first point as you, as you can see, and those who have already done the lab, I think they might be more uh, relating it much better, is that when we are supplying, when we are uh, adding a very small little AC input signal, the role of an amplifier is to amplify it as an output. So that's the basic thing about amplifier. Now, how we are going to achieve it and what is the process of doing it, the detail of it, I will explain the other batch on next day's tomorrow's class. But for the time being, let us discuss about with respect to the theory class, what is to be discussed. So next is that BJP, uh, BJT mostly in CE mode is what we are going to observe. Even in lab also, we are doing that itself because it has highest gain. You can see here in the third point itself, it's mentioned. All right. So how how we are how so this is this is what we are discussing like we uh, the beta value is very high and uh, as i already had mentioned the uh, bjt amp amplification mode it should always be kept at active region don't ever forget or confuse yourself okay this is a specific because in case of your switch there was two option if it is an open switch it is in cutoff region if it is in uh, closed switch it was in saturation region but for amplification purpose nothing but active region all right so that's a basic uh, to go to Another thing that you need to understand is what we are not going to discuss primarily today or if time permits at all, we will discuss. Otherwise, I will upload the material and you have to look into it. And that is called as biasing because biasing is not there in your syllabus. But unfortunately, if you don't know about biasing, many things you might be unclear for that matter. So it's up to you to decide whether you have to learn things properly so you can look into the material. Most probably I'll be omitting few portions of biasing maybe later but basically biasing what it does is as i was discussing in lab as well that it is a process in which you are forcing the transistor to remain in a particular uh, zone or a particular region suppose you want to make the bjt amplifier as an amplifier so you will force the bjt to work in that amplifier or in that active zone and active region by proper biasing so that's the utility of biasing and that in fact leads to something called as stability as well. So this biasing also leads to something called as stability. So again, if time permits, we'll discuss that also later, not today. The condition for making it as an amplifier is that the, the forward emitter base junction is forward biased and the reverse bias biasing of the connected to base region. So how will it look like the circuit will look something like this for l5 and 6 people it will be really easy for you all of you i guess to understand and to see this circuit because this is there in the manual as well so we are actually offering this is a ce amplifier at the single stage 
the amplifier circuit if you observe this is my input voltage we are applying there are few resistance which are r1 and r2 and re so these three resistance are applied over here all right they have their own role to play so we will see that and we have this rc which is the uh, collector resistance just to make the collector current also what we can do we can also have an rl over here or you can even take the output across rc as well to make the output and the proper for the proper supply source we have a plus vcc over here all right so that is how the circuit of an amplifier usually looks like we'll come to this slide later but just we i thought of telling as it was important in amplifier design as it establishes the correct operating point we are going to study in detail today okay operating point what is an operating point and how we are going to achieve it okay so operating point is a point or based on which we are going to decide whether the whether the transistor is actually that is remember this very carefully if suppose you are biasing a transistor to be working as an amplifier you cannot use that as a switch if you are doing that the switching operation won't happen and vice versa so this operating point is to be found out very carefully and it's very critical but it's a very easy way of finding out this operating point we will see right then you can see that as as by the use of static dc load line analysis this is what we are going to discuss this dc load line analysis ideally will give us the operating point what it what it does it does on the output characteristics remember the output characteristic ic versus vc curve which was looking something like this which was looking something like this so this is for for particular ib this was ic and this was one vce so this was the output characteristic so based on this particular graph we are going to obtain the q point you can see it's mentioned over here so without further delay of discussion over here i think i i would show you the way uh, this can be uh, achieved all right remember one thing the q point is, is it should be at the center position of the load line okay we will see that why and what and not why it happens why you have to keep it like that so let's take this direct example so i will go out of this move out of this so let me just start a new note all right so so let me let me just uh, start off on start off on that note that suppose we have the circuit so suppose i have the circuit with us so uh, maybe i'll I just redraw it and okay so this is my um, supply voltage so this is the same circuit as i was drawing over there this is my npn this is my register this is my capacitor and this all these elements has their own role and i have discussed this thoroughly uh, uh, on the for the application part uh, in in our lab so we'll discuss that also here also and maybe there is another capacitance over here and we get a v out somewhere here all right so this is how the circuit looks like and we have r1 r2 rc re and we have capacitance maybe c1 here also and this is c2 and like that there is a or If you look into the DC one DC load line, the object or way to do it is to simply remove the okay. So, so what I mean is that we will just remove. So that means you can observe that the circuit would look something like this. If I remove the Remember for L5, L6, can you, is it is it detectable? Can you identify this? Your voice is breaking. 
Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, because of the internet, nothing else. Uh, can you give me one minute. I'll, I'll, I might switch over to the other network if possible. If that helps. I don't think that will improve anything. Uh, did it? Did it got improved a little bit here now? Is no, it? Okay. Is it okay? Now it's okay. Yes. Okay. Okay. Just bear this problem because I can't uh, have the internet. Uh, this is the maximum I can do. So as for so uh, as I was talking about, so this is my DC load line analysis. Okay. So for that we have to remove. So I'll write it over here. Remove V in and the capacitance. So all this has been removed. So now the circuit looks like this, and definitely there will be a ground connection over here. Now, if you carefully observe my R, this is my R E, this is my R one, this is my this is my R two. All right. Now in this configuration, if you, if you consider uh, if you consider the KVL. If you apply it at the collector region, that is over here, maybe. If you consider the uh, KVL about this, so we can write easily that VCC is equal to IC into RC plus VCE. Okay. So this is my VCE drop. Okay. This is my VCE drop. Okay. And this is my IC into RC because this is my IC. This is my IB. And remember, this is my IE. So IC into RC plus VBE is actually the output, the total VCC across this particular terminal, the collector terminal. I'm talking about. All right. So this concept, hopefully, this is clear to all. It is all previous concepts. So IC, we can write very simply. IC, we can write yes, VCC minus VCE divided by RC. And if you further extend this, you can see minus RC. This is crucial, okay? Minus RC VCE plus VCC by y. Just just rearranging the equation. But what it happens is, what does this what does this indicate? You can observe that this is indicating nothing but y equals to mx plus c, where y is my, okay. X is my VCE. And C, the constant part, it is all right. And if you observe now, if I take these two parameter, y and x, suppose this is my y parameter and this is my x parameter. If I plot x versus y, if I plot x versus y, where x is equal to VCE and my y is equal to IC, this is nothing but if I happens to plot it, this will be nothing but the output characteristics. Do we remember this? We we already had done that before. So just me, let me just show you that once. So this is my output characteristics. Remember, this is my IC, and this is my VCE. This was my VCE. So IC versus VCE, the one that we have obtained over here. Is nothing but a out. We are doing something on the output. Track. Looking at that, this minus one by R C. This is nothing but the slope. Am I okay with this? Everyone okay? Is this fine to everyone? Is it fine to everyone? <laughs> Okay. All right. So this is my IC. This is my VCE. Now suppose now. Just give me one minute. Please. One minute. See if you can. Yeah, sorry for the trouble actually. Okay, let's keep on. All right, so this is this is where we are, right? Now, if suppose you substitute, 
okay now if you substitute vce okay equals to 0 in this equation so what will happen if v is vc equals to 0 so we are at this point and vc equal to 0 we are getting a constant term vcc by rc is it not the case at vc equal to 0 i'm writing the condition over here at vc e equal to zero, okay we are getting ic as ece by I rc okay and that to as a as a as you can if it is vc is equal to zero so it's vcc by rc so basically we are getting a point somewhere over here with a value vcc by rc am i clear with this point we are trying to find two extreme points of this curve that's the same that's the only so this is my vce when equal to zero that's the first condition so case one now case two is i will substitute I'll substitute IC equals to zero. So if IC equal to zero, okay, what will happen? If IC equal to zero, then we can say VCC by RC is equal to VCE by RC. So it's almost that VCC is or VCE rather is equivalent to VCE is equivalent to VCC. All right. This is clear. So what what does that mean? What what does that mean? It means that when i equal to zero, when i is equal to zero, see at this point we are i. At i equal to zero, when we take a four part on the voltage part, we are getting a point somewhere over here, which is equal to VC. Am I am I clear with these two points? We have established a VC load line analysis. For a C amplifier, we have found out that IC is equal to minus one by RC. VCE plus VCC by RC, which is a straight equation of Y equal to MX plus C, where M is the slope. Although here it is a negative slope that we are talking about. So what we have to observe is the two first and this last, the, the two extreme points to join the dots. So for that, what I did for the first part, we did VC equal to zero, and for that we found out that at VC equal to voltage, a maximum <coughs> current across IC as VC. Okay. So this is my IC max you can say. On the other hand, when IC equal to zero, that is at this point, the maximum voltage that it can have is VC. Already VCC is equal to VC. So, and as far as the load line is concerned, when I join these two points over here, okay, so this purple line that you are looking at over here, the purple line that you are looking at, this is called as the DC load line for the given transistor. Am I okay? DC load line. This is only a part of it. The DC load line, how we are calculating with respect to two conditions. We are considering when IEC is equal to zero, what is the maximum voltage? We are considering VC equal to zero, VCE equal to zero, or the the collector emitter voltage at zero. What is the maximum current? So this is the this slope that you are looking at. This is ideally what we are considering as a DC load line. All right. Now, if you observe carefully in this particular e example itself, you, you remember the graph that we had. If I go back, so the graph was something like this. Okay. This is this was with respect to IB. Okay, remember this is IB, this was IB, this was IB equal to zero, then IB equal to two, three, four, like that. We have done that in lab as well. So with more number of more values of IB, the graphs was going up. So suppose I repeat the same diagram over here as well. All right, so maybe I'll take a co other color and suppose I have a graph like this, a graph like this. I'm trying to redraw the graph that we have. Suppose this, are, this is a graph and maybe a, a small part like this and maybe a bigger part maybe like this. All right, this is what this is IB equal to zero. This is IB equals to maybe five. This is IB equals to 10, maybe like so on and so forth. It's the same diagram I'm just trying to draw. Am I am I making sense? We are just drawing the output characteristics, nothing else. The same output characteristics and I just draw. But the point is now, if you observe that the DC load line, 
okay carefully observe the dc load line has actually intersected some points okay it has in intersected some points while it passes through the ib camera's mic is on do you want to ask something someone mic someone's mic is on uh, all right so is, is it understandable this one if i consider the dc load line here and i take some random values of ib and we get suppose this curve okay in the, among this family of curve we are observing that the dc load line is intersecting some of these points so this points this blue colored point that you are observing over here okay they are called the operating points they are called the operating points we have just now discussed about the operating points so from the dc load dc load line analysis this is called as a load line analysis that from the dc load line analysis we can find out that which are the points okay for that particular ib okay for that particular ib and what is the maximum extent of current i uh, there is a collector current which can we can we can receive we can achieve for a particular collector voltage so you can see observe here carefully that if i happens to um, happens to take uh, some other color maybe so you can see that for all these cases we will get something like this this will be some voltage over here and necessary current will will get somewhere over here similarly this for this we will get some value over voltage over here and we will get some current over here similarly like this it will go on it will go on like this am i making sense people did everyone understood what i wanted to infer of this why it is important because using this operating points only we can decide whether the vjt is working in the in the as an amplifier or in the saturation or in the cutoff i think someone's mic is still on who's taking it on Okay. Any anyone? Okay. So any anyone having doubt at this point? At this point, anyone? Do we have any doubts over here? Sir, could you explain about the operating points again? Yes. Yes. Definitely. Uh, operating point is nothing but at the uh, suppose you have a given specification. and you found out that what is your output characteristics output characteristics we have already done in lab so hopefully you all are in a same uh, understanding that operate uh, the output characteristics is basically a plot where we are plotting ic versus vce given ib is constant so that is this green colored graph is what we are looking at now for the specifically for a dc load line analysis what we have to do is that we have to consider these two specific cases case 1 and case 2 where we are getting the two extreme ends of this curve okay one extreme end is when vce equal to 0 and the other extreme end is when ic equal to 0 at these two cases we are getting two of this extreme point the first and the starting if i consider the marking as a and the point b so these are the two extreme points that we are getting and we are dropping a a, a line okay which has a slope of minus 1 by rc between these two now we are observing that when this d when this straight line passes through these two points it is intersecting at different points on this green color of and those point of intersection is actually the operating point as is discussed now the significance of it is you can observe very clearly that as we look into this part or or the top half of it okay operating point you, you remember i in the presentation itself i told you that operating point will be such that it will be somewhere middle of the uh, load line so if you observe that when we look into this 
few the the lower half suppose i mark them as 1 2 3 4 and 5 the numbers 1 2 3 4 5 indicates five operating points on the five graphs that we have but if you observe if i take the operating point somewhere over here at 1 it is very close to cut off remember this region remember this region Yes, this was cut off region this part was cut off region so basically using if i use this point 1 we are making the transistor to be biased towards the cut off region so we are making it to behave as a switch not as an amplifier but remember the circuit that we have used is basically an amplifier circuit so you are designing an amplifier circuit but you are operating it at a cut off region why you are operating is that because you have obtained this particular point and you are happy that okay i'll take this as an operating point the one the first one marked point i'll take as an operating point it won't be same goes for two as well it is also very close because this is just a fictional graph that i have drawn but ideally they will be very close this space you have all, all seen in in lab itself you have seen they are very close this space so this will also be very similar to the cut off point even if you go to the x2 x3 the 4 and the 5 this is near to the saturation end so maybe i'll just write it down over here if you observe 1 and 2 they are near to cut off field they are near to cut off whereas the 4 and the 5 they are nearly about the saturation region because remember in the in the presentation i showed you that this is my saturation region and the cut off points are somewhere over here So it is near to saturation region. So again, the same mistake that you have designed, uh, you have designed an amplifier, but you are working at the cutoff region or saturation region, which is not desired. So what you have to do, you have to choose this point, which is three, okay, showing as this point as the operating point, okay. So three can be chosen as the operating point for amplification purpose am i understandable what why why what is important of the operating point how how we are choosing it and why we are choosing it yes sir so so then depending on the operating point we choose we can change the the function of the circuit yes so it's near not? the cut off yes, region yes, it will yes. function like a switch as a switch otherwise mm -hmm. it will be acting as an amplifier yes that's it yes that's okay it. okay thank so you so that yeah so that is that is what the idea is behind this operating point calculation and this point the three the optimal point that decides this because now we are discussing amplification so we are not going to uh, we are, we are we are assuming that the circuit that we are going to design is going to work for an amplification purpose so we are assuming that the third point over here is the optimal point based on which the amplification would be perfect so this three point has a different name and that name is called as q point please make a note of it so the q point the quotient point is a point amongst all the operating point which is chosen okay somewhere in the middle of the dc load line so that we have we get a proper amplified signal with a very good step am i clear with this part so given this point given this point we can find out what are the necessary ic or vce that is required and based on that we will restrict ourselves how and how i will tell you let me show you one diagram let me just clear the concept with the diagram because that's a little difficult to write or draw at this point i'll i'll come to this i'll come to this later as well all right i'll show you this one okay so this is a more uh, better like i i try to draw this graph itself so if you observe carefully what is happening that here so now we are all in the same understanding that this is my load line load line dc load line for for some circuit we have seen this you can observe that this 5 that you are observing here that 5 so this is 
minus VCC by RC that we have discussed. Clear? This 12 volt that you are getting over here, probably this is my VCC. The same thing we have drawn there as well. And this graph that you are looking at, they are different values of IV. 0, 10, 20, 30. Is it, is it understandable, resembling the same thing? Is it okay? Guys, respond this, respond please. Yes, sir. All right. Now, if you observe, this is my Q point, just like we had drawn in our diagram as well. And based on that, we have drawn some vertical lines downward and some vertical lines upward, such that this point from this Q, there's a perpendicular line which is present over here. You can see IBQ, it's mentioned. So what is IBQ? You can see that if I drop down this way, downward, if I drop it over here at this point, okay. So this is my this is this is my six value. Okay, so this is my six volt. And this is if I go like this, it somehow intersects here. Alright. So this value that you are looking at is somewhere is called as the ICQ or the quotient current. ICQ stands for quotient current. That is the current or, or for with respect to the Q point, whatever be the current we are achieving and whatever the voltage we are receiving. You can see this 6 volt will be called as VCQ. Okay, this VCEQ, this is one. Okay, so with this two specification, what is the advantage is that we will try the advantage, what now come to the significance of it. The advantage is that if I know the Q point, Okay, based on that, we will try to restrict the input signal within the Q point, okay, so that a favorable amplification happens. By that, what I mean, if you observe the input signal over here, this is input signal, okay, the next higher value is over here, this is a 40 microamps value. So if I go draw a dotted line like this, I, if I draw a dotted line like this, and if I go on straight like this dotted line, so this is the range, see carefully, this is the of IB. See, this is the I, this this range is basically the IC, IC range, right? Sorry, I, not IB, IC. So we are keep, we, if we want to keep the IC within this range of value, as an input signal that we are supplying and it generates a current which is between this 4 milliamps. This is 4 milliamps, this is 2 milliamps. So the peak to peak value is 4 milliamps. All right, so this is this is peak to peak is 2 milliamps actually. So if I keep the current collector current as 2 milliamps, we are supposed to get a favorable advantage over here because the voltage that we are going to get will be amplified Okay, o with respect to this V C E Q. Okay, so this is this part that you are looking at over here. This is basically the amplification. So the rule is that with respect to DC load line, we have to keep our inputs with respect to the Q point. That the proper side output is clear. If not, if not, suppose you don't you don't follow this properly and you change the Q point, you, you work somewhere somehow so that the Q point is too close to cutoff or it is too close to saturation. Okay, then what will happen? So this is explained over here. You see the Q point they have chosen somewhere here. Okay, the Q point is chosen somewhere here, which is towards the saturation part. So what is happening? You can see is close to saturation and eventually what is happening the distortion see here clipped waveform so the portion which is here the shaded part is outside the 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 analysis part itself so it's a cut off this portion itself is cut off the red color sinusoid portion is cut off this part is cut off cut off means it's called as clipped off actually it's clipped waveform so you are getting something like an output like this you might get something like this. So this part 
But even on the other hand, if you look at it, this point, the Q point is near to the cutoff zone. What is happening? This portion is actually cut off. So what the and what what is the significance of the discussion is that based on the load line, we have to identify where is my Q point. If I get a Q point, based on that, we will we will try to figure out what is the range of IC that we need to keep in order to get a favorable output. Remember those people who have done the L5 and L6, I told you the values of resistance R1, R2, RE, those are significant because based on those values and the changes, your operating point will actually change and hence your amplification will also matter a lot. All right, so this is about the discussion surrounding uh, the uh, process involved with load line analysis. Now let's go back to the theory part or to discussion for that matter so that we can understand how and what it is actually offering us. So this is basically with respect to the circuit which we have already done with and ideally this is again we have discussed in theory as well. So this C1, C2 that you are looking at, so C1 over here and C2 over here, okay, this will be C2. These are all called as the biasing volt. This is this is this is what we called as the um, block coupling capacitors. Okay, they are called the coupling capacitors. By cap coupling capacitor, it means that it will block the AC signals. Uh, it will block the DC signals from coming in to the supply because you are applying an AC input over here, so it will block the DC supply unnecessary spike that might come in and trouble the circuit so that it will block. And also it has also another advantage that it will also load, it will help in loading it. Right? That is multi-stage amplifier, one stage output will be input to the next stage. So that coupling will also be done by this transistors, uh, by these two capacitors. In it was actually we have observed that last day itself. The other will also okay. So that's how okay. what the idea is. You can see here the bypass capacitor CE is effectively an open circuit component for DC biasing condition, which means that the biasing current and voltages are not affected by the addition of capacitor in maintaining a good Q point stability. Yes, that's most that is basically what our objective is. We have to reach a point where the Q point is stable. We don't, don't need to uh, vary much. Okay, so that's that will give us a stability. So this is again the same circuit. I'm not discussing any further. One important thing over in this particular sorry, in this particular slide is this bias voltage. This is VB. Okay, this bias voltage can be calculated as VCC into R2 by R1 R2. This is my VB. This is my bias reference voltage. Somehow this can be helpful at some point. Okay, so this is the voltage at which this, when we are doing the DC analysis, it is the voltage across the phase that we are getting. So this is the biasing voltage. And similarly, you can see that as it is a uh, CE configuration, the beta value will be very high. This already we have discussed, it will be coming around 110 to 450. This we have done already, so we don't need to worry much. Another point of advice is also important, and that is this first point. Please make a note of it. That a general rule of thumb is the value of um, this one, I 10 times, yeah, I be flowing through this R2. R2 register is here. Okay, so the general rule of thumb is that through this R2, 10 times I B should be flowing through register R2. This is a general constructional detail. Remember in our lab, okay, if you remember, we had done something like 30, uh, I don't remember the specification, but it was like 330 most probably or something like that. And here it was 3.3. Okay, so it was it was huge difference. So we, basically R2 should be very small. So that huge the, the, the current actually passes through this R2. Okay, so that, another specification you can see and you can see this process I, I, I'm not explaining this yourself itself we can find out can be the values of this R1 you're breaking a lot the optimal value of sir uh, you're breaking uh, a lot could you repeat yeah, um, from after 3.3 uh -huh. amperes and 330 okay 
330 okay what what i mean is that uh, this this was uh, the pro this is a process through which we are trying to estimate the r1s and the r2s okay in the, in a circuit in an amplifier circuit if i want to specify what is r1 and what is r2 these are the formulas that you need to use okay simply as that so this is nothing but from the table from the diagram itself is quite if we look across the re trans terminal which is over here plus vbe which is this one uh, vbe is this one this this draw so vbe plus vre by 10 of ib because this is a general rule to keep the current across to for an amplifier so this is how the space that we can find out r2 similarly we can find out okay so rc we know the character uh, capacitance or the uh, how the capacitance will change based on the operating point based on that the all of the specifications are made for an amplifier circuit say that if i know about all this we can actually find out what are iv iv ic everything the way that we have already discussed previously all right so but i want the the point is that is the dc load line through which we can find out the q point for the q point particular q point we have to keep it stable and in order to do that we have to back calculate we have to find out what is the value of r2 and the capacitance values in order to see sir you are not audible Uh, you are not audible at all at all almost not at all at all almost okay no not, nothing much i i told that this is the design so you uh, keep breaking uh, up in the same place this is design <laughs> okay hello sir yeah and there Any sense? Any any better? Right? No. Is it better right now? Yes, sir. It's unfortunate. I I I have to do something next day. <laughs> I can't sit in my my own cabin to take the classes. Unfortunately. Anyway, I'll I'll try to manage that. If not every day this happens, so some today. It's, um so just to conclude just to conclude that this part we have already discussed in with the example that we had gone through so no need to discuss this one in fact this graph i was telling you that the same graph is here so the explanation is already given although these values are different although the q points will be different but that doesn't matter because it's all the same it's all that we have to keep in this particular example suppose in this particular example suppose yeah so this is the maximum extent of ic that we need to keep in order to make a favorable amplification of this much okay so your vce max is 9.34 volt your vce mean is around 2.04 volt so you can take the difference so that will be the total extent of this voltage that we are going to get so that's the amplification so you have given a voltage of millivolt range and you are getting in maximal uh, in in volt range so the amplification is happening but to make it stable amplification you have to choose the q point so that's the idea behind all this discussion if you are not doing it it will be either moving towards saturation or in the cutoff region and that will make sure that there is a clipping that will take place the voltage gain the last slide before we end today voltage gain analysis is also the same thing is the ratio between the v out to v in you can see over here okay so it's basically the v out to v in and we have observed on last day's class in even in lab i have shown that how to calculate very simple whatever the output you are getting divided by the input millivolt that you are supplied and with the ce the capacitance across the uh, emitter uh, emitter side we actually can improve this gain to a certain extent all right so that that's all so you can see we mentioned earlier that the signal increases the with the bypass capacitance as you can see ce 
so the high uh, frequency R is equal to zero and its gain is infinite. However, bipolar transistor have small internal resistance due to which the um, emitter region is called RE. So this small resistance will be there and that can be estimated something like this 5.5 ohm. Okay, this is not exactly relevant over here. But anyway, the exact voltage gain at low frequency okay, will be around minus 5.32, whereas with respect to high frequency gain, it will be around 280. So this is a range of value uh, that we are supposed to get out of the analysis, um, out of the specification that we have specified for the particular media. All right, so that, that's all about the voltage gain analysis for that matter. So, uh, so we don't have time any further. So even after that, we have the um, stabilizing circuit. As I said, the biasing circuit, I will be giving it to you so that you can look into it and try on your own to find out what is the right solution. But this is all about the uh, DC uh, load analysis and the uh, fundamental concepts leading to uh, uh, Leading, leading to uh, the analysis of amplifier circuit for a transistor. All right. So uh, when I upload the material, please look into it. Please go through it properly. If time in due course, I'll be uploading some uh, numericals also on this. Not much of numerical, very simple actually, because the, all the numericals will be like find out the Q point. So for any Q point calculation, you have to first put IC equal to zero. Then you have to put VCE equal to zero. And based on that, you find the two extreme ends. You make a line and adding or join a slope, join a find the slope and make the necessary graph. That's it. That's the process. Nothing else. All right. So that's sums up the portion that we have discussed today. All right. Thank you for your patience. I have already, I think, overshoot a little bit. Uh, um, so we'll come back on next day. Most probably we'll start with a new topic on MOSFET. Okay. So we don't have any class on Friday, but we do have, do we have a class on Wednesday? Uh, that is on Saturday? No. Because Saturday, I think it's Wednesday's time stop, right? 